And we have with us, uh, joining us on the couch, Nolan Coda is here. Am I saying your last name correctly? Is it Coda? That's it, yep. Yes, from Eons Encoded and uh, and the other band, uh, Pointless Culture. Pointless Culture, yep. Yes, yes. But uh, wonderful to have you here. Uh, Thank you. I, I was uh, saying to you uh, off air that I, I, I said to Jenny recently, you know, I've been playing this guy's music for like two years on the show. We should probably have him on. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. That's an honor. Appreciate um, it. And uh, yeah, I always get uh, I always get a lot of positive uh, feedback on that song, um, Reconnection. That's so cool. <laughs> it's 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 kind of epic, and uh, um, yeah, it's just great. It's one of those songs that gets stuck in my head, especially that ending. You know, it's a very yeah. very, very dramatic ending with the dun, 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 dun. It's quite heavy. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's that was my goal anyway. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. And you're getting some uh, love in the chat room too, uh, uh, Marissa. Uh, Coda, who I think you said is your sister. That is my sister. Hello. Yep. She <laughs> says, yay, Nolan. Very nice. Uh, Riley King uh, says, hi, Nolan. Hey, Riley. Well, for, let me ask you this first off. So where did where did you come up with the name? What does the name mean? So it used to be Aeons Apart, and uh, it was kind of just like some kind of wordplay I was just trying to go for, just what sounded cool. And um, uh, over time, I was like, well, I kind of want to incorporate my name, so encoda so I, that, I was like all oh, right let's kind of go off that and that, then that, encoded was born oh so it was kind of like a little subtle play there yeah and i think it sounded a little more not original but more to my liking i guess um but yeah it, it was just kind of like me just messing around with some words and seeing where they seeing where they landed yeah um, but it kind of stuck and like and people seemed to like it and behold a a aeons was born yeah and uh, and that it's all you, right? You play everything. Yep. Wow, wow. How do you? Um, I mean, it's it's unique. I, how how do you describe it to people who haven't heard it? Because it's not like anything. I mean, I can hear influences, but it's um, especially. I, I think the vocals are part of what gives it its uniqueness. Your approach with the vocals is different. I can't think of anybody who quite does it like that. But uh, how do you describe it to people who haven't heard it yet? It it can be kind of broad. So. I have a lot of influence from like Pink Floyd to yeah. Rush and then to modern bands like Tool. Um, you yeah. know, all the progressive rock slash metal bands have been kind of my go to for, you know, how I go about writing my stuff. Yeah. So I kind of just not like draw ideas from them, but kind of like take inspiration from what they from what they've done. And I just kind of make it my own, you know, just kind of like putting my own twist on some things. And a lot of it boils down to experimentation. So. Mm. Um, you know, if you're into like progressive rock, um, and you like a lot of synthesizer stuff and like very spacey, yeah. atmospheric type soundscapes and all that, you know, this, this is the type of stuff you'd be into. So, it, you know, it's very niche, I feel, but, um, it, it's fun. It's a fun genre. And, you know, I, I try to keep it interesting in terms of like making one song kind of heavier, but maybe one song a little more experimental mm -hmm. and, you know, more keyboard heavy. So just, uh, you know. Not to have an identity crisis, but like to you know keep it interesting. Yeah, as, as much as I as much as I possibly can. So yeah, so yeah, I would say like progressive rock mixed with some spacey sounds is probably the best way to de to describe it. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, so you play everything. You do all the vocals. Do you are those real drums? Do you also play drums, or the, do you program those? I, I do play drums, but uh, being in an apartment, that's a little tough. <laughs> um, yeah. So I program them myself so i use plugins which are like software drums yeah and i take you know sam not like well they're real samples of drums but not my own yeah but they're included in the software so i take you know what sound i want from each drum you know and cymbal and whatnot and then mm -hmm. i map them on like a midi chart and you can also play it on a keyboard because it connects by midi through that too yeah but sometimes i'm not always on time so certain sections i'll do just keyboard and sync them and then other times I'll map out each individual drum, which takes a lot of time, but yeah. it can be, it can open up my creative, you know, doors a little bit more because I can get really fast or really complex and it would sound good still, but like, you know, got to remember not to make it too like unrealistic. Right. So right. I would say, yeah, drums is like probably the one time consuming, one of the time consuming instruments that I have to do with, when it comes to my music, just because of it, it's, it's programmed kind of. Very mm -hmm. incrementally. Um, Aaron Billado, who uh, I don't know if you know Aaron, very, very talented musician. Uh, he says in the chat room, I checked it out before the show. Outstanding new fan here. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, his, that's uh, awesome. Do, do you know Aaron? I don't, but his, I'm gonna check him out. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He does very sort of experimental stuff too. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank um, you. With with the drum, so when you're mapping out the drums, when you're doing all that, do you um do you intentionally try to to put in something that makes it seem that makes it sound like it's not programmed? Yeah. So the flexibility of uh, I'll just say it. It's Easy Drummer Two by Tune Track. Okay. And that's what I've been using for the last few years, mapping out drums, and they allow you to kind of humanize each drum. Yeah, um, I've heard of this. Yeah. They have like, you know, certain settings. You can set velocity, which is kind of like how hard or how soft a drum sounds. Yeah. So to make it realistic, that's a very variable like setting that I use and I try to use it sparingly enough where it sounds like someone's actually drumming it. Yeah. So that alone is also time consuming because I don't want it to sound like, you know, super like processed. Right. 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 And, but you know, I'm not going to lie and say that they're real drums either. Yeah. But, you know, you want it to kind of sound authentic. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to go for is being as authentic as I can with what tools I have at my disposal. Yeah, so, that makes you know. sense. Yeah, it's amazing what you can do now with the technology. Um, I had a, a, another gentleman who um, he's got a band called Downhill Rollers, but it's and it's more of just a straightforward rock thing. Um, really, really good. But he, but it's all him. He does it all himself, and he programs the drums. And I, I remember saying to him, like, th 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 those sound completely real, you yeah. know, like, like I would never have guessed. So it, it's really impressive what you can do now. They they've improved their like interface and just overall quality over the years. They've, I, I mean, I'm not out all that well versed in like the progression of all that, but like you yeah. can tell that there's so much love put into these programs. Yeah, where like you could pretty much replace your drummer if you wanted to, um, right. And go that route. Um, but, so it's really cool seeing how much you can do these days from just, you know, a computer. Oh yeah, and some e and some like DI instruments. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. Um, what, what's your, what's your first instrument? Obviously you play multiple instruments. What did you start out on? Actually, uh, I started on piano. Okay. Um, but I, uh, you know, that, that was kind of like my gateway into music. Cause you know, my grandparents had a really old Casio keyboard from like the late eighties that I would kind of mess around on. And yeah. then that's kind of like what got me into guitar later on is, you know, and that's like my main instrument now, aside from bass. Yeah. So like, but Keyboard has been the best way for me to learn everything about music that I know today, or at least have me start out on music. Um, it, it's very versatile, and it was a lot of fun to learn on, and then just kind of, you know, went from there to drums, keyboard, like synthesizers, keyboards, yeah. and, you know, guitar and all that, and kind of expanded from there. I've heard uh, a lot of music teachers say that um, that everyone should at least learn some basic keyboard skills I agree. And, and that it'll help yeah. you and everything um not advice i ever fall i'm a bass player um awesome. and, and i can play a little bit of guitar i never i never learned uh i've never learned anything on keyboard and i probably never will but <laughs> <laughs> but um but i have heard a lot of music teachers say that that's really the best foundation you could ask for is if you start out on keyboard or if you already play something else if you go back and just try to learn you know just basic stuff scales right. and, and whatnot and it'll actually really help you Exactly. Especially yeah. the C major scale. That's how it's pretty much mapped around. And you just kind of experiment from there or learn. You can kind of use that as your foundation and then kind of like learning other scales from that C major scale and like learning all the other stuff from there. So, yeah, it's it's a great starting point. I remember those old Casios. Was it a was it a little one or was it because uh, I, I swear I, it shrunk on me because I, yeah. I started young. Right. <laughs> so like I swear it was like, you know, like a full size keyboard. Then one day I went over to play it like, I don't know, maybe four <laughs> years old or something like that. I swear it shrunk. Yeah. Because I don't know or five years old or something like that. But yeah, it's it's about like it's a it's a what is it? A 42 key or something like that. Okay. keyboard. Yeah, it's 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 fairly small keys. Yeah. Um, something you'd probably find on like a MIDI controller. Right. Right. You know, or something like that. So like it, it was comfortable. Yeah. As, you know, even when I was getting older and, you know, my hands were getting a little bit bigger and all that. Um, it was still fun to play. And it, I still have one right, you know, not the same condition as it was back then, but it's in yeah. my apartment right now sitting yeah. in the corner. So yeah, it's still there. <laughs> the I, OG. I, I think I have one in, in a, in a storage unit. <laughs> in there. Cause even though I never really learned to play it, I did have one. And, and I think it, it it's, it's, it's it, but it's a little one if I'm remembering it correctly. And I think it, I think it took like 
ba- I think it took D batteries. Yep, that's what mine took. <laughs> really? Yeah, six yeah. of them, to be exact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a power sucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, has your process changed over the years with with uh, Eons Encoded? Uh, a little bit. You know, I, I try to do all the production myself, so it was kind of like me learning how to do it all on my own, which was very tedious, to say the least, but... Um, you know, if you listen to my very first like demo track, Exordium, like that was just kind of me throwing some tracks together to see how things worked. Yeah. And then kind of like showcasing the sound I was going for in a yeah. way. So like kind of like keeping that synthy stuff and then getting yeah. heavier. So, you know, I, I think overall, like my process has kind of stayed the same in terms of how I compose. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the production of it, um, I've gotten a lot more, um, what, what's the word? Critical. Yeah. Of of it because, you know, my ears, you know, when you do like music on your own, it takes a lot out of you, especially, you know, in your ears. Oh, yeah. Um, the ear fatigue is, yeah. I think, what they call it. And uh, it's it's a lot. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I try to keep it streamlined um, and the easier it gets easier the more I do it because mm-hmm. like I kind of find what works and what doesn't work. And that's the fun of the experimentation that yeah. I that I get to, you know, go through. And uh, yeah, it. It, I think I've improved just in terms of production, but like, you know, how I go about writing and putting it all together has kind of stayed the same. Is is a lot of, um, because you mentioned there's a lot of experimentation, do, do you have some songs where you've kind of, where you kind of write it all out and then you go to record it? Or, or do you ever, or, or, or is it mostly just kind of experimenting as you go? Uh, so yeah, that's a good question. So a few songs I have, uh, like actually written out completely. Uh, one of them actually the whole EP were reconnections on the cosmic archives. That whole EP was actually tabbed out on a software called guitar pro. Oh, okay. And I kind of put all the structure together on that. I programmed the drums through that and like, but through like sheet music. So it was even oh. more tedious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it helped me like kind of establish the basis of what I wanted to go for. And I was able to change it there without having to like worry about recording anything. And I didn't know about like scratch at the time where you can like record stuff like kind of on like a piece of paper in your computer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, type of thing. And you know, just that's how I kind of did all that because like when it comes to recording, you always picture it kind of being like, you got to do this in one take. Mm -hmm. It's not the case for me. Like I've been able to like do it all kind of in sections. Yeah. You can do it comfortably and I can adjust things if I need to. But, um, the more experimental songs, like on my first album, it's inspect element, which was, uh, Oh my God, it's almost two years old now. (laughs) <laughs> which is crazy so theoretical and beyond the mirror are two two of the instrumental songs on that that i kind of just you know messed around with to just come up with like a way to bridge into the next songs yeah afterwards which were also mapped out okay you know in in software and written out yeah um just trying to, it's, it's more of those just like tiny musical ideas that i kind of like what sound i'm kind of like what sounds good and will this work will it not work um mm-hmm. and that's super fun for me yeah um and they turn out really fun like it, it's really really fun to listen to do you have do you ever have an idea that y- you end up uh you end up throwing away that you you maybe you were excited about but then you go to do it you go to record it and you're like ah this isn't working oh hundreds really yeah yeah, yeah I'm, I'm like the guy throwing out those little crumples of paper in the trash <laughs> bin all the time um, yeah but you know the cool thing about technology is that you can erase things and rework them without having to, you know, worry about throwing stuff away for real. <laughs> right. So if I don't end up liking an idea, I can just kind of readjust and like fix it and or add stuff to it, what have you. And then it kind of I kind of like to make things work. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I like to craft my ideas, but not have them go to waste. Right. So there are some ideas in each of my songs that are probably actually not probably they are borrowed from previous ideas um yeah so hidden away's verse riff is actually a song that i wrote back in like 2012 that i didn't really have any way to record so i was like this riff's kind of cool let's put that in so um but there's still a fair share of like different ideas that just would not work for the songs i already have out or probably would not fit my sound at all so okay but that's the life of being a composer, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you have those ideas that go to waste and you have those ideas that stick and you want to reuse. Um, Jay Fed in the chat room and, and he, he asks everybody this question. Uh, he says, uh, have you ever considered increasing the length of your beard? Uh, I want to. Do you? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'd like to. Um, I try to keep it somewhat neat, <laughs> uh, but you know, it, 
<laughs> I don't have the best luck with my beard sometimes. So really, does it get to a? It gets a little scraggly, so I yeah. got to tame it sometimes, which reminds me I got to do that yeah. <laughs> fairly soon. <laughs> but yes, I would like to grow it out a little more. <laughs> Same with my hair. That's my next project. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, so have you ever? I, I'm assuming not, but have you ever played any of this live in front of people or? No, no, I, maybe one day I will, but you know, cause it's all solo stuff. A yeah. lot of it, you know, I'd have to like have a band for hire and, you know, <laughs> and have the time to right. assemble all that and actually practice them again. Yeah. Um, but no, I've, I've, you know, thought about potentially doing something like that sometime in the future. Yeah. Um, if you know, it got to that point, but you know, I think it'd be difficult to assemble right now because there's so many moving parts mm -hmm. and there's, you probably need about six keyboards probably. <laughs> like, I love to layer things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it's on the table. Just, I don't know when it's very up in the air. I mean, the other option would be to, you know, just, just play in front of backing tracks and yeah, that that's also a possibility too. Um, that's something I've kind of toyed with um, really? yeah. here and there. Yeah. It's just a matter of kind of getting it all together. But yeah. I'm not opposed to it. Yeah, That'd yeah. That'd be fun. But yeah, either way, it would be a lot of work, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, Fraser Ramsey in the uh, chat room says, hey, from Edinburgh, Scotland. Well, hello. Hello. Very nice. Um, well, let's do this. Let's uh, let's play another track. Um, I'd like to... Um, uh, well, actually, I'll let you pick, though. What, 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 would, you, uh, what would you like us to play? Uh... I don't Let's know if do I don't... my uh my newest one fragmented okay. I released back on St. Paddy's Day. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's a fun so one. This is the newest one. Very good. All right, let's uh let's give this a listen and then we'll uh we'll come back and chat some more. If you're just joining us, we have Nolan Coda here and we're our, uh, we are featuring and talking about uh his music from Eons Encoded. Uh this is his solo project. And uh check this out. This is the newest one. This is Fragmented.
I love it. That is fragmented from Eons Encoded. And we have the man behind Eons Encoded here on the couch with us in studio. Nolan Coda is here. That's that's so good. Um, we've got, uh, let's see, uh, Mike from uh, Queen City Cabinetry in the chat room says, really good. Uh, Aaron Bilodeau uh, says, wow, this is a great song too. JFed says, I'm digging this. Uh, Jenny says, uh, loving this. And uh, uh, Dina Coda, a relation there? Yep, mother. That's yep. your mother. Yep, very nice. Yep, she says, love fragmented top track choice for me. And Isaac Banks also said, a great song. Yeah, that is really good. And, uh, you know, we were kind of talking off air while I was playing, kind of a little bit of an 80s vibe there with the keyboard riff, which oh, is yeah. really catchy. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to, like, replicate kind of a DX7 type sound, like a Yamaha electric piano. Yeah. And kind of, like, put some modern twist on that. Add some reverb to it and call it a day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give a little different spin on that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Melanie also has a, a non-musical question uh, because she's watching online. What evil beings does Beard Man have on his shirt? Oh, it's the scream. <laughs> it's it's the scream uh, guy. Yeah. Yes, yes. It, I got it a hot topic. I think. Oh, yeah. I'm getting ready for spooky season. Yes. Oh, yeah. so is Melanie. Well, I think for Melanie, it's already here. So some people just you know Halloween She's is got there. The giant. Giant, giant, uh, giant skeleton, skeleton in the yard. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's already arrived for her. <laughs> yeah. Some people start uh, Halloween really early. She covets all things evil. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan Coda from Eons Encoded and from Pointless Culture. Uh, Nolan, uh, too, we were talking off air about uh, your other band, uh, Pointless Culture, and um, one of the guys in the band is also in radio, you were saying. Yeah, yeah. Harrison Hinman is our drummer, and he's a very talented individual. Uh, I want to give him a quick shout out. He's an awesome dude. Um, helps us a lot with our booking and, yeah. uh, you know, getting stuff out there, kind of managing our social media stuff as well. He does a lot for the band, so I want to give him a little bit of love. And he's on uh, WJYY up in Concord, right? Yeah, 105.5 JYY. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, station I know. I used to live in Concord, so I, I know that oh, station nice. really well. Yeah. Has he been there a long time? Or Yeah, we actually used to live together up until this last month. Oh, yeah. no kidding. Oh, yeah, wow. we're very close, very close friends. Oh, um, cool. And so it's awesome that we get to do all, everything we get to do together, you know, with the band and all that. So, yeah, super Ex fun. Excellent, excellent. Now, with Pointless Culture, you guys are, um, you're currently recording, right? You're recording an album? Yeah, uh, we're, on the, we're recording an EP um, okay. and, and then an album hopefully fairly soon after that so we have like a four track we're working on right now um, okay and yesterday we just uh finished up two of those and then we got to record one more and then we're pretty much on par to release it probably in the next month or two excellent um so that's really exciting it's it's more of like an indie punk type mix okay um, so it's a lot different than what i write <laughs> But it's like in my wheelhouse still, and it's so much fun. Yeah. Um. Our lead guy, who's also named Harrison, is a fantastic songwriter. A lot of the songs are all of his. Um. Pretty much all of them, actually. And want to give him some love too. And Ben in the band. Um. Fantastic musicians. Very fun to work with. Um. So yeah, we're we're on par to release that pretty soon. It's gonna be just a little four track and kind of like going over each of our style and you know, kind of like what we are as a yeah. band, who we are as a band. So what do, looking forward to that. What do you do in that, in that band? I'm the bass player. Okay. That's what yeah. I figured because in the, in the picture on Facebook, you're, yep. you got a bass. Yeah. Um, and there's two guys named Harrison in the band. There is. Oh yeah. yeah. Very rare occurrence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Harrison's not a super unusual name, but it's not super common either. So yeah, that's funny. It's like in between, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. They, they both go by Harrison, like neither of them's Harry or. Well, uh, no, actually, I just number them in my phone. <laughs> you really? So yeah. I, they're, they're kind of in order on how I met them. So H1 is who I named our drummer Harrison yeah. and who, who I used to live with. And H2 is our frontman and, you know, kind of the lead and savior of the band, as I call them. Oh, that's cool. Um, but it's like a huge family in that band. We got a whole like crew. It's, it's a lot of fun. We just played in Warner at the uh, summer jam this past Saturday. Oh, cool! A lot of fun. Played to play a couple new songs that we had, you know, in the works. Mm -hmm. Um, and they went super well. So you know, this Good. is this is really fun to have, like, as a, you know, kind of like I guess my main priority right now, just because like I haven't had like a working original band before. Mm -hmm. And while guitar has always been like my main instrument, I have found so much fun and joy playing bass yeah um it's kind of like opened up that passion right back up again that you know may have like kind of dwindled over time because music is, is is kind of like taxing at times sure but like just playing a new instrument 
primarily like that is is a huge like just breath of fresh air well, i was gonna say too it must be a relief in a way i mean obviously you have a lot of passion for eons encoded but at the same time not having to do everything yourself must be nice oh my too. gosh yes <laughs> yeah huge relief um <laughs> But, you know, we all get to, you know, pull our way. We get to put in our input that we, you know, when it comes to, like, writing our our songs and, like, how we want to go, you mm-hmm. know, our, our direction. And, you know, it, it's it's nice to have that brotherhood with mm-hmm. each other. It's, we're, like, very tight-knit. And, you know, we, we always come to, like, some kind of, like, solution or conclusion to how we want to go about saying, like, recording this song or writing this song or yeah. what we play live, et cetera. So it, it, it's a fun time and just couldn't ask, ask for a better group of people. Now, the the uh, EP that you're recording now, will that be the first thing that you've released as a band? No. Uh, last uh, October, um, I think October 6th, we released some homebrew recordings uh, called The Sampler, okay. which was three of our songs that we started you know, our shows with. Um, the Line's Been Drawn, Lift Off, and Little House. Um, so those we recorded actually in our drummer Harrison's um, work, uh, and we kind of just set everything up through a mixer and just kind of like, you know, let's just get huh. something out there. And it turned out, to, it came out pretty good, I would say. Yeah. You know, for, for being kind of done on our own. Yeah. And fairly quickly. Yeah. At, but um, our first recorded, like, professional song, like, through Cedar House Sound and Sutton, Jerry Putnam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, incredible guy to work with. Very, very fun guy to talk to as well. We recorded Severed Ties um, in a studio back in November released it in December and that was like our first like I guess breakthrough song and okay kind of bringing us out into like the professionalism side of things and yeah. we're working with him again for this EP and it's just been an overall fantastic experience okay gets oh. better and better good good <laughs> yeah has the how long has pointless culture been around because I feel like I've heard the name even before uh Jenny mentioned that uh, she had booked you for the show I, I feel like I've heard of the band so it's the four of us have been a band with four members since about March, but we were a three piece with, I was with the other two Harrisons for about a year. Oh, okay. And then the other two Harrisons who went by H squared or Harrison squared back then, <laughs> uh, they were like, you know, jamming out, they reconnected with each other. And, you know, I was like, Hey, I want, I want to play bass. Yeah. <laughs> no, but they asked me as well. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So we just kind of like formed it, you know, one by one in a way. Oh, okay. So as a full, three and four piece band depending on how you look at it i guess like we really got our start a year ago and we okay. added um ben our second second guitarist back in february march time frame i dig th- th- that's a cool name too pointless culture what's what's the origin of that name so the uh, both harrisons were trying to come up with a name and i if i correct me if i'm wrong guys if you're listening <laughs> uh i think they were gonna go with divorce culture and then pointless something but then they like kind of mended the, mended them together yeah. so pointless culture was born yeah i kind of fuzzy details yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. um you know they were kind of going the same route i did and kind of like seeing you know what sounded pretty good you mm-hmm. know word generators are great when it comes to that and you gotta <laughs> try to find something that's not taken or right you know is is open to be used with uh so it, i think it kind of started the same way that my name did yeah. but they kind of blended two words together yeah from other names and so, you know, Pointless Culture was born. And I love the name, too. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, trying to find something that's not already taken, that can be uh, that can be the, one of the hardest things. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, it's a lot easier than it used to be because now, you know, you can Google it, you can look it up. But I remember a time, I, I've, I've told this story on the show before, but I had a, a friend I went to high school with, and um, I, I remember running into him a couple of years after high school. And uh, he was a musician, too, and he told me about this new band he was in this uh, rock band. And, and uh, I said, what's the name? And he said, intuition. And he said that to me and, and immediately I'm thinking, Oh God, there's probably so many bands that have already used that name. And then swear to God, I ran into him again a few months later and uh, same place. And, and uh, I, I said, how's the band? And he said, good, except we had to change our name because we heard from another band already using that name. And I'm too polite to say anything, but in my mind I'm thinking, yeah, of course. <laughs> Of course yeah. you had to change it. Intuition. Like the most obvious, you know what I mean? Like, of course, there's probably a, a million different bands that have used that name. So, yeah, that can be a that can be a big part of the challenge is just finding something where you're not going to run into a problem later. Exactly. Yeah, the more words, the better. And the less yep. common the word, the better, too. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's very competitive out there, not just with music, but with naming your music yep. and yep. all that. But, you know, I'm glad we've, 
we were able to both find something, both, you know, the band and myself, something that we could both use and call our own. Yeah. That's really, really fortunate to be able to say that we can do that. <laughs> now, do you guys play out a lot with that project? Yeah. Uh, we played uh, at the Bang & Amster stage last uh, August, this past oh. August, and that was our probably our biggest show yet. Um, cool. But we haven't played a ton. We've played maybe six or so. We have one coming up in Ackworth on the 23rd. And uh, our first one was at Tandy's Pub in downtown Concord. Oh, cool. And that was the night before. It was kind of like a little release party for Sever Ties because it was coming out that midnight yeah. you know, of, the, of the next day. Yeah. So we were like, let's, you know, let's do a cool little show there. And we got some help from a friend of ours, uh, Kurt Felder, who runs like, you know, kind of like music journal journaling like youtube videos and very talented guy yeah um really cool guy too and he, he helped us get that gig okay so and then you know we had kind of like a little drought in between we added ben we were kind of learning some new songs then it wasn't until maybe this past you know summer where we started to really get some more shows booked but mm-hmm. it, it can be tough to get them booked now um yeah as i mean summer is usually probably the busiest time Oh yeah, for for you guys as far as shows, right? I mean, I know, I know a lot of bands will, uh, you know, kind of use winter to sort of record, and then you know, and then you know, spring, summer, early fall to play out. But um, that seems to be the the easiest way. I mean, you know, I I don't play anymore, but when I was in bands, that was always to me that was always the best way to do it because you know, in the winter, it's just miserable to. <laughs> yeah, I've <laughs> I played shows before when I was lugging equipment in the winter up yeah. s- upstairs outside and yeah. like slipping almost dropping stuff and oh, it's yeah. miserable yeah but um yeah we're kind of going that same route you know we're just kind of taking the maybe the winter maybe a few shows here and there but like kind of taking that time to really focus on recording more stuff yeah so we have so many things that we want to add to you know the music world out there so you know it's it's kind of like that opportune time to do all that and yeah we're really trying to book for next year yeah excellent spring summer excellent excellent um, well, why don't we play another, uh, why don't we play another Eons Encoded song? Um, I, I, yeah, I definitely want to get one more in before we run out of time. Uh, but, uh, I'll let, I'll let you, uh, choose one again. What, uh, let's, uh, let's go back to the first album, Inspect Element. Let's do, Ooh. let's do Hidden Away. Hidden Away. Yeah. I think I've listened to that one. That's the one I want to go for a Deftones style, style vocal. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm very okay. I don't. I don't think I did listen to this one. Then, all right. Well, I'm very curious now. Um, all right, cool. So let's uh, give this a listen. This is this is hidden away. Uh, the artist is Eons Encoded, and uh, that is Eons Encoded on the couch. That is Nolan Coda, the man behind Eons Encoded. Uh, let's check this out. This is called Hidden Away.
got those dramatic endings. I love it. That is uh, that one's called Hidden Away, and that is Eons Encoded. And Nolan Coda from Eons Encoded is here with us. He is on the couch. And we do have another uh, family member, I believe, Belinda Brooks Coda is in the Facebook live chat. Hey, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Very nice. It's cool that they... Uh, that they're supportive and that, uh, you know, they come out to, to listen. That I is, love uh, it. I love it. That is, uh, that is outstanding. Um, now what, obviously, so you're, you're pretty busy. It sounds like with pointless culture, but, um, do you have more eons encoded music coming as well? Or? I have a, I have a couple songs that I'm kind of slowly chipping away at. Uh, one of them is an older track I, uh, had back in like 2014 called vanishing point. And I don't know when that'll be done, but, it's it's got about a minute or so so far. Just uh, gotta you know just you know get at it and when I can. Yeah, it, it's so hard. yeah with with how much I'm doing and how many you know different projects I'm a part of. It you know it's hard to find that time uh, to really sit down and mm-hmm. focus on that stuff. But it, it's it's gonna come. Yeah, it's gonna come. And there's yeah I'm never gonna stop doing aeons. It's just I don't know when. You know, I'm gonna be able to like pick it up again comfortably, right? And and stay with it. Um, and you know, burning out, burning yourself out is just you know not the move, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, but it's gonna come. It's gonna come. Um, my Facebook and Instagram are you know the best way to keep in you know contact with me or see what I'm up to for especially Aeons because I have just made an account for that. Yeah. Not long ago, just to keep it separate from my own my own stuff. Um, but. All those updates will be on there, uh, you know, when I get to it. But I got a couple things I'm yeah. you know, working on. And uh, for people looking for uh, Eons Encoded online, too, we should uh, just clarify for anyone who doesn't know, Eons is spelled A E O N S. Uh, people might be looking for it without the A and uh, unable to find it. But I wanted to go with the European spelling. It looked cooler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've ever seen it spelled the other way. Can you? Is it sometimes spelled without the A? Yeah, I, I discovered that E O N S is kind of the more Western U S way of spelling oh. it, but like with the added A is kind of European. It just looked cooler to me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it is cool. But I think it's pronounced the same. You can say yeah. aeons. It's all. It all means the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. See, I have seen it spelled without the A, but I just assumed it. Uh, who, people who were spelling it without the A were spelling it wrong. But <laughs> but but maybe that is maybe that is acceptable. Uh, English is weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or sometimes things are wrong, but over time they become accepted because they're exactly. spelled wrong or spoken wrong so often. <laughs> yeah. I just thought it looked pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, it does. <laughs> it definitely does. It definitely does. Thank well, I'm, you. I'm really glad you joined us today and we'll, we'll actually close out the show with one more track in a moment, but, uh, this has been wonderful. And, yeah, thank uh, you very much. Absolutely. Like, well, you know, like I said, we've been playing your music for uh, for long enough. Might as well have you on. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, very humble and, you know, happy to be here. Yeah, thanks, no. Thanks again. Absolutely. Thank you for coming in. And um, and I look forward to, to getting uh, Pointless Culture, to getting you guys in here as well. Oh, my God, uh, yeah. That. That'll we, be, we're, we're super excited That'll be for cool. That. That'll be cool. If you want to pick one more, uh, Nolan, uh, we'll, uh, we'll play one more to, to play us out. Let's do Mobius. That's the one that somehow has the most plays, and it's oh, really? not anything crazy. It's just kind of a fun little jam. Oh, interesting. <laughs> which, yeah. which one is that on? Is that on Cosmic that's Archives? On, that's on Inspect Element. Oh, it's on... kind of like my closer. Yeah, oh. it's a fun little tune. Okay, yeah, we'll go with that. All right, very cool. All right, so this is uh, this is Mobius from uh, the releases Inspect Element from Eons Encoded. And Nolan, thank you again, my friend. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely, and here it is. This is Mobius.